Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. Based on the reactions I get to videos I make, homeowners associations are one of those groups that people are very interested in hearing about, especially when they lose cases. And if you've never lived under the rule of a homeowners association, you might not know quite what we're talking about here, but if you have, you do. <laughs> so there are often developments that they create a, like a subdivision. A developer will create a subdivision and then as they you know, build it out, they will say, oh, by the way, there's a homeowners association that the owners of the subdivision are going to be working with and under, and they're gonna elect members of the, of the board who are gonna run it and establish and, and enforce rules that you'll have to live under if you live there. And a lot of people don't understand how picky those rules can get. And in Michigan, for instance, they're required to disclose to you. It's one of the few disclosures that are on one of the first pages you sign that says, is this property inside or under the control of a homeowner association? Yes or no. And they, and they understand that people need to know that up front. And you need to know what you're getting into as you go in. So several people sent me a story out of Florida by Trevor Frazier from the Orlando Sentinel. Their goal is to bleed owners dry. That's a quote. $34 million victory in Florida homeowner association lawsuit is rare, according to experts. So the people who were living under this homeowner association thought that what the HOA was doing was wrong and filed a lawsuit and they've won and they actually think that award's going to go higher. So it's $34 million right now, but it could very well go higher. And of course, the HOA could file an appeal. But when Martin Kessler moved into the development in Florida that he's in. He moved in in 2008. He says he quickly realized it was a huge mistake. This was the first place he'd ever lived with a homeowner association. Right now, he is 97 years old. And he said, living in an HOA is not really a pleasant thing for a resident. He's a retired economist, so he understands numbers and money. He said the fee he was required to pay was a capitalist's perfect dream of a business. People must join, whether they like it or not, and they pay all the expenses of the business. Now, he's among more than 5,000 members of that community locked in a class action lawsuit since 2017 against the developer that they allege improperly collected HOA fees. Uh, On November 2nd, Polk County, Florida Circuit Judge awarded the residents $34.8 million dollars. Uh, a president of the National Homeowners Advocate Group uh, based in Texas said, that's the biggest award I've ever heard of. Now, his group specializes in helping people fight HOAs and lobbies for homeowners protections. We get calls from all over the country, but no one has ever reported to us a win as large as this. Experts agree that fighting HOAs is hard for residents and big wins are even rarer. In Florida, in Florida, HOAs govern more than 44% of the population. 44% of the population in Florida is apparently living on property within an HOA. With fees that can reach into the thousands of dollars from an estimated 3.5 million homes in the state, HOAs can make lawsuits long and costly for residents. And if you think about this, if you're suing the HOA that runs where you are, it's kind of like you suing the city within which you live. Because if you win, you're going to get paid out of tax dollars. So if you sue the HOA and you win, or they're simply fighting you, they're fighting you using the money they got from the fees that were submitted by you and your fellow members. Uh, Their goal is to bleed owners dry, says the president of the Cyber Citizens for Justice, a homeowners advocacy group based in Florida. They'll hit you with motion after motion and tie it up for years. HOAs are infamous for doing things such as limiting how many signs you can put up in your yard, or whether you can put up signs at all. That, of course, raises free speech issues. They sometimes ban things like basketball backboards or sports equipment from yards, front or back. Uh, Or they tell residents how many cars they can have. I did this story not too long ago about the guy who had a car in his driveway and it wouldn't fit in his garage. And they said, well, you can't park the car where people can see it because it's got a bad paint job. And the rules were kind of unclear as to exactly what was allowed to be parked in the driveway. And some people like the old patina off of a classic car. And so he was tied up in litigation there over that. Uh, A Florida HOA was accused recently of threatening a family with a $100 a day fine for putting up Christmas lights too early. Now, the developer, um, which was purchased by a home builder, developed this particular HOA that we're talking about in other communities in the early 2000s. 
Uh, they built amenities such as pools and clubhouses. And the way these work, and it's similar to how a condo, condominium works also. So if you have a condominium association and you're building units, people buy the units and, and part of the deed says, by the way, the bylaws of the condo association are incorporated into the deed for this house. And that HOAs are similar. And you get this notice that says, if you're one of the early people who buys in and the place hasn't been built out yet, it'll say, as this thing gets developed, then eventually there will come a time where we're going to turn it over to you. And, and then you will get to govern yourselves. But until that time comes, the developer is often the person running it. So here's the deal. When the time came for management to be turned over to the community, the developer wanted to sell them the various amenities to the community for $73 million. So they built the community and they put in things like clubhouses and pools. And then they said, okay, now that the place is built and we're going to turn the you know, management over to you, we're going to sell you this stuff for $73 million. Now, when you are buying a home in a development like this, they'll often tell you, oh, by the way, there is an HOA here. But what you get for that is some uniform rules that everybody's got to live by and a clubhouse and a pool that you're going to pay $73 million for. So <laughs> there was a problem. A certified appraiser said the amenities were only worth about a quarter of that. And Kessler said, and he's the guy who filed the original lawsuit, I was immediately against it. It was the most stupid thing in the world. Now, the developer that's proposing to sell it for that money based its number on the future value of roughly $86 a month per person in there, or per house in there, uh, that they're going to be charging. And that's according to the attorney out of Tampa who represented the residents in the lawsuit. That fee, the lawsuit alleged, was illegal. Residents couldn't opt out of it and could even have their homes foreclosed upon if they refused to pay it. Now, the newspaper did attempt to contact the attorney who represented the HOA, got no uh, response. But um, it turns out that the $34 million is only the beginning because there might be another $27 million in pre-judgment interest because a lawsuit talks about what your damages are at the moment the lawsuit is filed. You can often go into court and say, okay, now we want interest from the moment of the lawsuit to today, and there you go. So, And there could be also $4 million in fees that were collected this year that this lawsuit found previous to that was illegal. So what was collected this year, you'd think, is also illegal. There will also be, according to the attorneys, 5 to $10 million in attorney fees, and apparently those can be recovered from the other side based on language in the HOA agreement. Um, experts say it's rare to find attorneys who will take cases like this without some assurance of payment, but apparently the attorneys in this case on the side of the plaintiffs looked at this and said, this is such a strong case, we'll take it. We won't require anything up front from you guys. Um, another problem that residents often face in HOAs is harassment for speaking up. And that happens when residents will sometimes say, we don't want you to perceive that lawsuit. Because if you lose, it's going to cost all of us a bunch of money to pay the legal fees. What about if we win? Well, uh, what are the odds of that? Some people just don't want to take chances too. And then, of course, there's a problem with the government oversight. Because the government actually does not oversee a whole lot of stuff to do with the HOAs. Uh, one person said, even when we have rules about elections, they still won't hold them. If you can't get rid of them, that's the main problem. And so there have been people who've been fighting HOAs for years. I know there's even uh, radio shows in Florida dedicated to dealing with HOAs. I forgot the name of one. I remember it was in Florida, flipping around the dial. I often do that when I'm in other states. And I heard a show that was dedicated to condominiums and HOAs because so many people in Florida live under one or the other. But they're common everywhere. And they've been popping up more and more lately, especially uh, later on. And there are some advantages to an HOA. There are some people out there who want to buy a house and want to know that all the houses on the street are going to conform to some template that they have in their head of, I want it to look like the way it looks right now forever. So I don't want my neighbor painting their house green. Uh, I don't want my neighbor parking three cars in his driveway. I don't want a basketball backboard in my neighbor's driveway. And if that's the life you want to live, find that HOA and move into it. But I've spoken to a lot of people 
who said, I bought into a condominium and I didn't know how restrictive the rules were. Even though the deed that they got for the condominium says incorporated here are the condo rules. And if you read the rules, you'll see the rules are there. People say, I didn't see the rules. And I've often seen people who've signed a document saying, I acknowledge I've read the rules and I agree with them. Uh, And the same is true with HOAs. And so, like I said, in Michigan and many states, they are forced to disclose to you if you're buying in an HOA. And they have to tell you that so you can't come back later and say, I didn't know I was in an HOA. You knew, you knew, you just didn't understand how severe they are. So if you don't want someone coming by your house every single day looking to see what color your drapes are, because I've heard of that too, even though your window coverings are inside your house because they can be seen from outside your house, I've heard of HOAs that will actually say, we noticed that your drapes, your curtains inside your house are the wrong color. Change them or get fined 100 bucks a day. And yes, those fines stick. And if you don't pay them, they can foreclose on your house or your unit or whatever it is where you live. So you have to understand what those rules are. And some of them seem draconian, as we say. Now, theoretically, if enough people banded together and elected a new board, you can often rewrite rules later, especially in an HOA, in theory. Or you can stop enforcing rules. But that's only going to be if you can get the board to do that. So I've mentioned before, I lived in a condo a long time ago, a long time ago. And I got to know several members on the board. And they said, Steve, why don't you run to get on the board? We'd like to have you on the board. And I got on the board. And I'd never had problems with the board. But I knew it was a condo when I moved into it. I understood that. But the weirdest things that we dealt with, and and I've talked about some of them before, But the number of times that people broke the rules in ways that were obvious and bad. So, for instance, these are all basically like townhouses that are attached. And everything on the outside of the townhouse belonged to the condo association. And from the paint in, as they jokingly said, was the condo owners. And they had paid, the association had, to have the exterior of the buildings painted and roofs put on. And part of the exterior painting was we painted the doors, the front and back doors, and everything looked nice. Everything matched perfectly well. And I remember one day driving, just driving along, and I, I never like reported people, and I just thought that was somebody else's job. But I remember one day driving down the row of condos, and I look over, and there's a woman painting her back door with a roller. And she painted it the most hideous color. And the hideous color she painted it clashed with everything. It's one of those colors that clashed with the universe. It was an affront to God, okay? And I'm looking at this going, why would would she do that? And a couple days later, uh, somebody pointed it out and contacted the board and said, my neighbor just painted her her door the craziest color. And I don't think that conforms with the rules. And I seem to recall they contacted us, really sorry, but we have to paint it back now. Because number one, the you know, we did actually have an idea here as to how this place is going to look. But number two, the door is our responsibility. The, you know, the door is ours. You can paint the inside that you see, but the outside is the responsibility of the condo association. I assure you that someone's going to comment in the comments below and say, Steve, that's nitpicky. That's nonsense. That's idiotic. Number one, I told you I didn't complain. I spotted it. I simply saw it. I'm a lawyer. I spot rules and rules violations. I just spotted it. I saw it. I said, oh, there's a rules violation. Okay. I spotted it. But It was brought to our attention as the board, and the board acted on it, and the door got repainted. And that might seem nitpicky. And if that's nitpicky to you, don't buy a condo. (laughs) And don't move into an HOA. So I think the pendulum is going to swing back the other way. HOAs are very, very popular for a while there. And I suspect that more and more people who complain about them are going to cause some people to go, you know, I don't want to live in an HOA. And there's some places in the country, like Florida or Arizona, you know, where if you are looking at recent developments, there's a very good chance it's going to be an HOA. Go on to Zillow or some property hunting website, and you'll see that there's a pull-down menu of things you can look for or things you can exclude. And if you click exclude the HOAs, watch as the offers and opportunities dry up because so many of the recently built homes are going to be in those things. So there you go. But this is a good indication of Somebody winning here. (laughs) Their goal is to bleed owners dry. But a $34 million victory in Florida's HOA lawsuit is rare, but it happened. So that's cool. Trevor Frazier wrote that for the Orlando Sentinel. 
Keith, Donald, Tom, and Adam all sent Thanks a lot, guys. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. What do you call a pencil without lead? Pointless.